Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, may I warmly welcome you to the Habibi Center's webinar. My name is Marina, a researcher of the ASEAN Studies Program at the Habibi Center, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar on the topic of expecting new ASEAN milestone for the Myanmar crisis under Cambodia's ASEAN chairmanship. Before we begin, I would like to briefly explain the issue that will be discussed this afternoon and also the rundown of this forum. On February 1st, 2021, uh, the Myanmar military or called Tatmadaw overthrew the civilian government led by the National League for Democracy or NLD. And this uh, dom domestic political issue has developed into a humanitarian crisis a year after the coup. For instance, around 1,500 Myanmar, Myanmar people died and more than 11,000 opponents were arrested by the Tatmadaw. As ASEAN chair in 2022, increasing ASEAN's role in resolving the Myanmar crisis has become one of Cambodia's priority tasks. Although uh, steps taken by Cambodia in response to the crisis have split ASEAN voices, it can actually provide an opportunity for dialogue uh, with the Tatmadaw. However, uh, Cambodia's success in dealing with the crisis still needs to be uh, continuously observed due to the lack of significant progress from Myanmar in implementing uh, the five-point consensus. Therefore, to discuss this issue more deeply, we are highly pleased to have four distinguished speakers joining us today. First, we have my colleague, Lutfi Ramis. He's also a researcher of the ASEAN Studies Program at Habibi Center. Second, Ms. Raung Xiaomu. He is an advisor from the National Unity Government's Ministry of Human Rights. Third, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Kafi Chongkitaporn. He is a senior fellow at Chulalongkorn University. And finally, uh, because Ms. Tarot has another commitment, so she will be replaced by Mr. Cheng Fanerit. Uh, Mr. Fanerit is the president of the ASEAN Vision Institute in Cambodia. Thank you very much uh, all for your time. And with them, we will be discussing the recent development of the Myanmar crisis one year after the coup. Additionally, we will also analyze the measures taken by ASEAN, especially under Cambodia's leadership in addressing the crisis. Uh, regarding the rundown, this webinar will be divided into two sessions. First is the presentation from our speakers with 15 until 20 minutes allocated time, respectively. After after all presentation are delivered, we will move on to the Q&A session. So the audience can ask questions or give comments on uh, our YouTube live chat feature. All right, without further ado, I would like to invite the first speaker, Lutfi, as the representative from the Habib Center to present our research report entitled Expecting a New ASEAN Milestone, Assessing the Progress and Solutions of the Myanmar Crisis under Cambodia's ASEAN Chairmanship. Lutfi, I'll give the floor to you, please. Thank you so much, Marina. Thank you so much for the panelists, Mr. Kafi, Mr. Fanarit, and Mr. Ong Kiyomu. Um, it's an honor for me and for my colleague, Marina, to actually um, have an opportunity to, um, to disseminate, to, in, uh, to, to give an insight on, um, on the result, on the findings of our um, uh, research, which we have done for pretty much two months um, until now, um, but it's not finished. And um, without any further ado, I would like to please allow me to share the screen. Um, I will present a bit of the findings that we have uh, acquired, that we have gained from the research titled Expecting a New ASEAN Milestone, Assessing the Progress and the Solutions of the Myanmar Crisis under Cambodia's <clears throat> ASEAN Chairmanship in 2022. As we know, Cambodia has taken over the chairmanship, ASEAN Chairmanship since December 2021. Some progress have been made, some are under progress, and we'll try to assess and we'll try to see the prospective measures that might be taken by Cambodia as the chairman of the ASEAN and um, uh, the ASEAN in general, in broader sense. 
Uh, therefore, I have uh, we have four um, important outlines for our research um, findings. The first one is um, how the military, uh, how the internal political um, uh, crisis becoming a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar. Um, pretty much, uh, Marina have uh, mentioned a bit of the. Um, the, 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 the military cope and the humanitarian crisis itself during the opening and we'll try to assess the collective action taken by ASEAN in addressing the Myanmar crisis since before Cambodia uh, taken the uh, chairman uh, ship in December 2021 until uh, up until today, up, to, up until recently and uh, we'll try to see the prospect of measures that Cambodia could uh, take uh, as a as chair this year uh, to, get, to give more impactful um, uh, role, to play more impactful role in Myanmar crisis. And uh, ultimately, we'll try to uh, address few recommendations in regard of what we find what we found and what we uh, think would be should be or could be uh, implemented by cambodia by asean and uh, at the broader sense and even as uh, for indonesia as the upcoming uh, asean chair next year in 2023 um but before we'll try to see from the roots the myanmar crisis how it shifts from internal political crisis to humanitarian crisis. Um, again, Marina has mentioned before uh, on February 2021, the Satmada offered to the civilian uh, government led by, led by the NL, NLD um, after the landslide victory in, in, in the general election. And it, um, it was followed by the occurrence of massive protests, including demonstration, campaigns, and silence and silent strikes. And um, in response to the protest, Tatmado implemented curfew, restricted crowds, and cut off even the cut off the internet access, and deployed armored vehicles, and pretty much used violence in disperse the crowds. And it became the humanitarian crisis um, until today, one year after. The, uh, the COPE actually happened in February 2021, as Marina and has mentioned earlier, the number, the crisis in numbers, and also um, the humanitarian crisis has been exacerbated by the policies imposed by the Satmadao administration that, that would make the, uh, that would actually make the distribution of aid uh, uh, and um, humanitarian aid and other aids become more difficult and also a restriction on banking access, telephone access, and those all only to make this uh, crisis become worse in Myanmar and up until today. Definitely this crisis, the humanitarian crisis, the coup itself, and when it shifted into the humanitarian crisis, the world responded. Um, in general, we can see uh, the condemnation and the economic sanction implemented by, the, for example, by the United States, by Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, and the European Union. However, we could also see more neutral reaction um, um, expressed by China and Russia, which pretty much uh, saying that this is internal um, uh, internal political uh, turbulence of Myanmar and they should not uh, interfere in any pinch of it. And of course in ASEAN as well, Myanmar as fellow ASEAN members, the crisis in the country um, uh, also sparked um, reaction from the fellow as member states, which um, we could see in two different kinds as well. Um, the ones who called for dialogue, such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore, and the one who pretty much stood at their uh, at their position, um, 
to maintain a non interference principle in, in regards to the Myanmar crisis, such as Thailand, Philippines, Cambodia, and Vietnam. <clears throat> And as I think we uh, we got into the second outline the, uh, that is assessing as and collective actions in addressing the Myanmar crisis. Um, based on our research, we found four uh, important milestones um, carried out by ASEAN in addressing the crisis since March 2021 to August 2021. Uh, but I would like to give highlights for uh, the one in um, in August, for uh, for example, um, the appointment of Erwan Yusof as ASEAN Special Envoy for Myanmar, we knew that um, for, from since August 2021 um, until until Cambodia took over the chairmanship, um, Erwan Yusof um, could not um, visit Myanmar as uh, Tatmadaw did not allow the access for, uh, for Ariwan Yusof as the special envoy of ASEAN for Myanmar to meet, to meet with Aung San Suu Kyi and other um, uh, NUG governments uh, in Myanmar. Um, uh, based from that alone, we could see that these collective actions showed insignificant process and progress um a long one year since the, the coup happened especially from the myanmar side and based on that as well asean decided um one of the uh implication from that insufficiency um, um capability from myanmar to actually implement the, to actually welcome this collective action by asean one of them was showed by the asean's decision to invite only non-political representative from Myanmar to the, to the 38th and 39th uh, ASEAN summit on October 2021, which um, the general general Aung Min Hlong uh, responded to the decision with the objection and refusal to send non-political uh, representatives and effectively um, um, put Myanmar in the position of world would not um, obey, would not uh, accept the outcome of the ASEAN summit itself last year. Um, we see from this point that um, consensus, um, we can see uh, the ASEAN Charter Article 1, Paragraph 7, that ASEAN aims to strengthen democracy, enhance good governance and rule of law to promote and protect human rights and fundamental freedom. But how about the principle, the, the principle that um, stipulates that ASEAN member states did not, do not intervene with the domestic problems of other member states. And also in this case, um, in, the, in the case of Myanmar crisis, we could also see some other countries, some other ASEAN member states countries, ASEAN member states gave insignificant reaction, natural reactions of we do not intervene into domestic problem of Myanmar, which is also um, um, relevant and logical if we could see from the ASEAN Charter, Article 2, Paragraph A. And besides of that, um, we see that it could be it might be one um one fact one factor that um asean collective actions did not work in this myanmar um, crisis up until now at least but we could also remember that for once asean had excluded the principle of non-intervention or non interference for humanitarian reasons during the cyclone Narges disaster in 2008 and in which in this uh, on that period as well, the Tatmadaw also refused international aid to be distributed in Myanmar. But ASEAN could put aside um, the non-intervention principle uh, practically and 
was able to talk with the Tatmadaw and the relevant um, authority in Myanmar to allow this AIDS to be distributed in the country because of the sequenarges. Based on that fact, uh, based on that um, analysis, based on, on that uh, presumption that uh, there are crises, there are Asian principles that most of the Asian member states um, are holding tight into, we would also see, would also analyze how prospective is Cambodia's approach as ASEAN chair in 2022 in the Myanmar crisis. Um, based on the press conference, I think, um, by the Minister of Foreign Affairs in December 2021 in receiving the ASEAN chairmanship, um, it was also expressed that extraordinary situations such as the Myanmar crisis need extraordinary action which Myanmar crisis became Cambodia's priority with, uh, within their chairmanship period in ASEAN. And um, the chairmanship as well aims to improve the situation in Myanmar based on the guiding, guiding principles of their five-point consensus and the ASEAN charter. And the most important thing is that Cambodia aims to emphasize ASEAN centrality in building the atmosphere conducive to dialogue and creating trust among various parties to reduce, to reduce violence and deliver humanitarian assistance. And what did Cambodia, what have Cambodia done within a few months of their chairmanship in ASEAN? We, um, we put three important um, um, milestones within Cambodia's chairmanship in ASEAN in regard to the Myanmar crisis. The first one is the first one is the Prime Minister Hun Sen's visit to Myanmar on January 2022, which this also sparked some reactions uh, within the ASEAN member states as well, or the international communities, even in Myanmar itself, in Myanmar alone. However, we could we uh, we actually saw that um, this visit, uh, Prim, a Prime Minister Hun Sen's visit to Myanmar, regardless to the uh, the actions uh, entailing from the visit, we, we could we could also see a a, a new door open for ASEAN um, based on the visit of Hun Sen to me, Hun, Prime Minister Hun Sen to Myanmar. Prime Minister Hun Sen was able to talk with the uh, with the Tatmadaw and General uh, Senior General on Senior General Min Ong Lang on um, particular issues in regards to the crisis such as the distribution of humanitarian assistance and as well um, in regards to the case fire between the uh, Myanmar military to the ethnic uh, 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 weapon, weaponized group in Myanmar as well. And we, we saw that it, it was, it was a, a, a sign of a good, appro uh, good progress within the Cambodia chairmanship. Uh, regardless to the reactions um, actually uh, uh, sparked from the visit. On, based on the visit as well, um, because it, 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 it sparked controversy along the, uh, the, uh, the leaders and the, prime, the foreign minister in ASEAN, um, the ASEAN foreign minister uh, retreat was uh, actually uh, postponed until February 2022 because of the Prime Minister Hun Sen visit to Myanmar and on March 2022, uh, 2022 um, again, um, ASEAN Special Envoy got to visit uh, Myanmar for, um, for the continuation of their, uh, their, measurement, their measurement of the uh, Myanmar crisis. And we also took uh, um, emphasize, we also emphasized the a tripartite discourse that was actually stipulated by Prime Minister Hun Sen as well. Um, we'd like to a bit go more deeply into the tripartite mediation, which we Hassan actually have been familiar with because since 1997, the, the tripartite mediation has previously been used for Cambodia peace process. And um, in that uh, uh, tripartite mediation, um, 
di cyber side, uh, uh, the discourse was aimed to develop mediation mechanism and facilitating this process within the support of us and of partners during that time in 1997-1998. And it was uh, once again stipulated by the Prime Minister Hun Sen for the Myanmar crisis, which the discourse um, comprises of Brunei Darussalam as the previous chairman of ASEAN, Cambodia as the reset as the current chair of ASEAN as and, and Indonesia as the next uh, chair of ASEAN uh, in 2023. And this type of well aim to create opportunities in the midst of the extension of the gas fire uh, in Myanmar until the end of 2022 that I have been mentioned earlier. Uh, was discussed during the Prime Minister Hun Sen visit to Myanmar on um, January 2022. We see that um, the discourse itself uh, would be uh, would be would be potential, would be prospective for Cambodia's chairmanship in ASEAN 2022, um, as it was uh, it was used, it was utilized few decades ago, based on the almost the same circumstances, uh, d'etat in Cambodia, and the crisis that following uh, the, the coup d'etat itself in Cambodia. Therefore, we see that the tripartite mediation should be encouraged uh, by Cambodia in order to, to accelerate uh, to gain more ground in mediating Myanmar crisis. And besides of that, Cambodia also needs to mobilize support and commitment from other ASEAN member state uh, dialogue partners to support the process. Because we see that during the Cambodia peace process, the tripartite as well, um, they, they were supported by the ASEAN dialogue partners, uh, the friends of Cambodia, and in and, 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 and order to the mediation process keep happening, keeps on going until meeting the, 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 the point that it stopped. And yeah, we, we, we think Cambodia needs to, um, to gain ground and support and commitment from ASEAN dialogue partners in order to accelerate the, the impact from the tripartite mediation. However, apart from that, we see that um, ASEAN needs to also examine the implementation of non-intervention principle in the Myanmar crisis and harmonize the implementation of other principles, including the good, the good governance and the respect for democracy and human rights. And also we see that Cambodia needs to help facilitate ASEAN's baseline for to build dialogue, not only with Tatmadaw, but also to other parties such as the NUG, and Cambodia needs to help facilitate asset special envoy to establish communication with all parties in Myanmar because we don't want the process to be on only on one side. We, we want Cambodia to um, establish communication with other parties, relevant parties in Myanmar, and see multi-perspective um, 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 input from other parties in Myanmar besides the Tatmada itself. Um, also, for Indonesia, as the next um, chair of ASEAN, uh, we think that Indonesia needs to play a more active role in supporting the steps and the approach of Cambodia in the Myanmar crisis and the, its mediation. And while it, the, the time will, when the time comes where Indonesia took or takes over the chairmanship in 2023, Indonesia needs to continue and improve the efforts made by Cambodia this year to actually keep the momentum going and the process is not then process would not, would not stop um, after it changed the chairmanship uh, in ASEAN. So um, yeah, those are our recommendations. However, uh, you can see our complete papers in regards of this um, um, uh, Cambodia's role and approach and in Myanmar crisis in its chairmanship in ASEAN 2022 in our full report 
and it is downloadable at the Habibi Center's website. Um, the link is on um, the PowerPoint itself. You can access it. And I would like to say thank you for your attention and hopefully we could also discuss this more deeply within the webinar um, now. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Back to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Lutfi, for the comprehensive presentation. I noted that unity and strong commitment amongst uh, all ASEAN member countries are required to settle the Myanmar crisis. So next, we move on to Mr. Aung Chao Mu to deliver his presentation. As the advisor from the NUG's Ministry of Human Rights, Mr. Aung will share the recent development of the crisis from the perspective of Myanmar. Mr. Aung, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh for presenting uh, informative uh, research and finding. And it's an honor to be speaking with, alongside with other distinguished speakers on this webinar. I'd like to start uh, off uh, adding a few more things on the context itself, the developing context in Myanmar. And the situations remain very volatile and very concerning in Myanmar. And the human right, gross human right violations, uh, killing, arresting, and burning the houses, uh, villages continues to be widespread across the country. And, and we are talking about uh, million, million of people uh, here uh, when we are talking the, the first phase changing volatile context in, in Myanmar. And a year ago, the ASEAN has uh, invited uh, the junta's leader me online to um, to the conference the ASEAN leaders conference and agreed with five point of consensus and it has been a year a year has been too long for a million of people to pay the lives and livelihoods uh, so far uh, as the research uh, as well outlined there is almost no progress has been uh, made uh, on those uh, consensus. And there is uh, first and foremost, no uh, genuine will to implement such consensus, uh, point of consensus. And, and you, you just do not need capacity alone or capability alone to implement. You need a genuine political will to be uh, implementing and, and uh, uh, such um, uh, point of uh, consensus. And I think, secondly, the, uh, I think the research as well highlight is the, the fact that with the, there are contradictory uh, articles in ASEAN Charter, like non-interference plus uh, promoting uh, human rights, democracy, and, 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 and freedom across ASEAN region. However, the case of Myanmar, it's not a lone humanitarian crisis. It is a political crisis generating human rights crisis and humanitarian crisis on top of it. And its impact is widespread across ASEAN countries uh, yeah, when uh, domestic issues become a regional and then from there in international, it can not be treated anymore as a domestic affairs. So then regional international response and interventions is vital in, in, in such, on, on such situations. And, and the military that we are talking about here who came to the ASEAN leaders conference uh, military leader came with a blood shed at hand and handshake with ASEAN leaders and agreed uh, these five points of consensus. And this is the same military who has committed genocides that the United States has recently uh, declared as a genocide. And there's an ongoing case uh, in International Court of uh, uh, Justice as well um, for committing genocides against Rohingya people. Since the of uh, February, as of today, uh, the same military has been committing continued human rights violations that categorically fall under international humanitarian law, uh, crimes against humanity to war, amounting to war crimes. So this is a business usual for more than a year long. And, and, uh, and again, the cost of this is being bared by the, by the people of Myanmar, million, million of people of Myanmar. And when it's come to the uh, ASEAN's uh, five point of consensus, yes, it is a frame, uh, that has been out there and agreed, but there is no time or there is no indicator being said how it is going to be implemented, when, 
and how the progress is going to be measured and who to hold accountable in case of failure. And today, after a year, we see a total failure from, from, uh, the, 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 from the implementation perspective of those uh, point of consensus. So there's hardly any, any, any milestone to be shown, okay, what, what had been done, what had been progressed so, so far. Uh, secondly, the, um, I think the, uh, the appointment of the special envoy uh, is um, like it was previously when Brunei was taking the chairmanship, it was, uh, it was envoy from, from Brunei and then it's being handed over, the chairmanship be, being handed over to, to Cambodia and Cambodia has... Uh, has taken over the, the envoy's rule and they need to be consistent. So I think the, 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 it, the, the representations of ASEAN as a, uh, uh, like by appointing an envoy shouldn't be uh, attached to, to its chairmanship because there is no consistency. When the chairmanship is handed over to another state, the, the special envoy change. So it, it, it's very complicated to be keeping the progress uh, in track and as well as the, the diplomatic approach and the approach that has been taken in place in, in res responding such crisis. And I think given the, um, the failure, uh, ASEAN thoroughly need to reconsider uh, the role of soft appointment and the mechanism of the special sent by to, to Myanmar uh, in, the, in the view of like poor record in the previous and current holder of this admitted difficult position, despite the Cambodia has made trip like the, the Prime Minister of Cambodia has, despite the people of Myanmar, opposed the trip, and and still the the the, the trip took place, and and, uh, and and as a result of the trip, we have seen so far no progress on the ground or at the international arena. What has been achieved from 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 this trip, uh, and secondly, the the, the followed uh, follow up trip by the uh, by the uh, by the special sent by and and ASEAN Secretary General from a humanitarian angle as well. Uh, recently uh, has been public there, but so far we haven't seen a uh, significant visible result as a result of the, this trip. And I think the, the um, given all this failure, uh, ASEANs once again need to recon reconsider what this, despite the, 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 the five point of consensus is uh, a document that could be used uh, to be discussing uh, the, the progress or to make the betterment, uh, to, to, to contribute to the betterment of, of Myanmar in terms of democratic transitions or democratic movement. Uh, the, the ASEAN need to think like what alternative it, it, it could, uh, alternative approach it can uh, take in order to tackle the issues in an in, 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 in innovative way uh, that will have maximum Im impact. Um, and, and are in doing so, ASEAN really need to engage all stakeholders uh, in, in Myanmar, particularly the legitimate go government that truly represent people of Myanmar is vital in, in doing so. So far, ASEAN publicly did not engage with the people's, uh, people's representative, which is people's government of Myanmar. And if ASEAN is one year later still trying to, do, to not to engage the primary stakeholder of the of the catastrophe, uh, the result that we can expect uh, it could be very limited or or, or uh, even even no result. I think, as well as ASEAN, need to play its moral show its moral obligations uh, to uh, to to the regional stability and peace. Again, the what is going on in Myanmar will have impact. Uh, significantly on the regional stabilizations and regional peace and and these need to be taken into considerations and uh, and ASEAN immediately need to publicly meet with NUG and also ethnic um group uh, ethnic groups uh, that has been vital uh, and has been fighting for for years for equal uh, equal rights democracy and 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 federalism so the like often, I think ASEAN is trying to use the humanitarian corridor as an entry point, and and uh, and and this is again, I think, in our view, not a lone humanitarian crisis. It can be a lone tackle from a humanitarian standpoint. And Aha Center, for instance, it has 
as like you have in your research as well, you have mentioned that it worked during the Nargis and the Nargis and the, the crisis now are two different landscape. And it was a natural disaster back in 2008 and, and the needs and the, the intensity uh, was different. And today it's a main man-made disaster where a, a has center could be equipped to respond in a crisis that's man uh, that's natural, but in a crisis that's continued volatile and involve uh, the lives and livelihood of 54 million of the people of Myanmar. Um, ASEAN need to really assess its AHA center in best positions to tackle the humanitarian issues. Yes, if it is, it's need to be done in a way that's again, game changing and innovative. Uh, uh, like when you are like AHA center or ASEAN is trying to deliver humanitarian war aid uh, to the people in need, if it is going through, the, the, the military who is blocking and who is making this displacement, who is a major player of this displacement, uh, this humanitarian aid will never go to, to, to the people who are in needs. And, and we can't really see the resultant impact of, of the delivery of this humanitarian, uh, humanitarian aid. In doing so, I think the civil society in democratization of pro process of Myanmar even, even before uh, 1st of February play, had played an important role and, and today, as of now, and civil society in Myanmar playing a larger role, both in democratization process and, and serving the most needy in hard to reach area. Therefore, it is critical that uh, the AHA Center and ASEAN engage civil society organizations and discuss uh, uh, to generate innovative solutions to deliver humanitarian aid, uh, uh, humanitarian aid to, the, to, the, uh, to the people in need. And, and, and most of the people that, who are in needs of humanitarian assistance in Myanmar are in ethnic uh, control area, for instance, in, in, in Karana state, which is bordering to Thailand. And, and the concept of cross-border assistance could be a, a, a big thing uh, as well. And, and, uh, and, and such uh, approach need to be taken into consideration in, in, uh, in, in delivering uh, humanitarian aid. Lastly, I think dialogue, yes, dialogue is vital. And of course, as uh, someone who believes in human rights and who believe in reconciliation, who, who believe in, in truth. For me, uh, I, I believe in, in dialogue, but the military of Burma who has been sucking the, 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 the resource uh, of, the, of the country as blood sucker uh, has been has been trained not to have dialogue and, and their language that they understand. And, it, and, and that's why people of Myanmar today uh, are, are taking resistance in order to end this dictatorship for one and all. And people of Myanmar have paid too many. Uh, and, and, and I think people of Myanmar deserve better uh, uh, than what ASEAN is doing and, and ASEAN definitely plays a, a critical player and it's need to uh, engage with international uh, international allies like United States, European Union and Canada and Australia in, in doing so. Uh, understanding the, the constraint there and, and of course like when, when ASEAN countries has different will when it's come to, to, to the issue of Myanmar, like for, for example, Malaysia, Indonesia and, and Singapore need to take more active role in coming with a cohesive and comprehensive policy to what to Myanmar at the, at the, at the regional level. And, and this is vital. I think your research has also highlighted the role of like Indonesia's place in, in, in a very important role. So Indonesia, uh, uh, it's an opportunity for Indonesia in upcoming chairmanship to show its both moral obligation plus its, uh, its uh, leadership uh, role in ASEAN being a founding mem member of uh, ASEAN. And uh, I think lastly as well, the, the, the dialogue is a dialogue, but what had happened to the people of Myanmar and, and particularly the most vulnerable one uh, could be, um, uh, couldn't be forgotten, it couldn't be forgiven and this need to be justice uh, like regional international level. Uh, mechanism that's ensure that perpetrators of all crimes that took place are, are held accountable. And in such crisis, which is complex, uh, uh, like, like Myanmar, the traditional ASEAN way may not work, uh, and it hadn't worked. If, if it's work, we will see significant amount of result. 
uh, uh, today after after a year. So once again, I think ASEAN need to really um, see what else uh, what what else uh, can be done in order to uh, to save lives in Myanmar, to ensure the regional uh, peace, security, and stability, and and see what, like what other intergovernmental organizations. Uh, despite charter uh, may be different from 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 for example from in the sense from from African Union, and uh, instead of like inviting non, uh, like non political um, representative or, or or foreign minister to the ASEAN foreign minister uh, meetings and and and, and Burma, uh, uh, like the, the the significant actions need to be taken against the failure. Like particularly, like I, I, I think the suspensions of the even membership could be could be uh, uh, could be one one solutions to 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 the time that that uh, the progress has has been made. Uh, the, given all these facts, I think uh, once again, uh, people of Myanmar uh, have faith as uh, in in ASEAN. That's why uh, Myanmar came into membership and have been an active member of ASEAN. And ASEAN, the people of ASEAN, particularly, need to push to its government, uh, its government to play more critical, uh, responsible role in tackling the issue of Myanmar. So I end there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Aum, for explaining the current situation in Myanmar, so we could know what's happening now there. And uh, several interesting recommendations that I highlighted from your presentation, such as um, the evolution of the Myanmar crisis from a political crisis has developed into human rights crisis and now um, a humanitarian crisis. And because there is no progress of the five point concepts implementation in Myanmar, uh, ASEAN needs to consider an alternative, an alternative approach to tackle the crisis. ASEAN also needs to engage all stakeholders in Myanmar, including uh, the legitimate government. And lastly, um, ASEAN could engage with AHA Center and CSOs to seek uh, innovative solutions for distributing humanitarian aids. Thank you once again, um, Mr. Aung. Now uh, it's time for us to move on to Mr. Kafi Chongkita Forn. As previously mentioned, uh, he's the senior fellow at Chulalongkorn University, and he's also a veteran journalist on regional affairs. I believe that Mr. Kafi's expertise will deepen our discussion today. And in this session, Mr. Kafi will explore the issue from the perspective of ASEAN. Mr. Kafi, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Salam ASEAN. Uh, Marina, thank you very much. Uh, I have learned a lot from the two uh, previous speakers, especially uh, from uh, our Indonesian friends, and as well as the uh, Ong Jomu, uh, who speak out uh, that ASEAN should do more. I can really understand uh, the frustration he has watching ASEAN as an organization trying to solve a very serious, complex uh, issue. So I hope that. Uh, he should be more patient, uh, watching ASEAN carefully. I, I believe in ASEAN and I think ASEAN is the only organization can handle this issue, this complicated issue. Of course, nobody gonna be happy with ASEAN approach, whatever ASEAN way or even ASEAN consensus. And actually I, I would take a different uh, view uh, on the research. I, I don't think there is a difference between the ASEAN member, they express different views. But when it comes to consensus, they always agree. And once the consensus has been achieved, everybody will follow, including Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia. So I don't think uh, one should uh, make distinction saying that uh, each country uh, wanted to different thing other than ASEAN consensus, that is not true. Whenever uh, some different views has been expressed, that should not be taken as an ASEAN position. You notice carefully, um, during the first uh, two, three weeks of ASEAN chairmanship, a lot of criticism on the, uh, the ASEAN chair, which was not very fair because uh, uh, the ASEAN chair did it on his own initiative. But once they, was a retreat amongst the ASEAN foreign minister. The ASEAN consensus emerged and all except uh, Cambodian chairmanship and whatever plans that uh, has been debriefed to all ASEAN leader. So that is the 
ASEAN uh, protocol. Uh, today, I, I will focus on two aspects of the situation, the current situation, as pointed out by our two previous speaker, not much has uh, uh, progress has been made. Uh, I, I, for one, uh, who believe that uh, ASEAN consensus five point is very useful and is still rele uh, relevant and is very important uh, as a framework to find a durable, I mean durable uh, solutions to the Myanmar uh, crisis. At the moment, as you know, and I think uh, uh, Ong Chao Mu has correctly pointed out the blatant human rights violations by the military regime uh, in the Nebido was just indescribable and it will continue to do so uh, during the uh, dry season. So look at the overall, uh, I will focus on the two aspects of the current Myanmar situations, the internal aspect of uh, Myanmar crisis and the external uh, Myanmar uh, crisis. The external one uh, is much more uh, united, uh, consolidated uh, efforts amongst uh, uh, ASEAN member. I don't see ASEAN uh, as being divided at all. I think ASEAN uh, share different opinion. They might appear uh, disunified, but in the end they come together uh, as a consensus, even though some of the lowest denominator, a lot of people didn't like it. But uh, you have to remember, given the long history of ASEAN, 54 years, whatever ASEAN uh, decided, ASEAN uh, would pursue. And ASEAN is not like other major power. When they make a decision, they can retract at any time. ASEAN will continue to commit. And this is exactly uh, what I like to, to say about the ASEAN five-point consensus. Progress has been slow, but to say that there was no progress was not correct. And I think uh, the number four, uh, the discussion on the uh, humanitarian assistance, I think ASEAN has delivered uh, during the visit of the special envoy, some uh, humanitarian assistance to uh, Myanmar Red Cross, of course, to deliver uh, human uh, uh, humanitarian assistance to all affected area, especially those uh, uh, attack under attack by the uh, military junta, like in Sakai and in uh, Kaya State, uh, would be extremely uh, difficult. There would be uh, more discussion on this. I'm actually very happy that Cambodia will host uh, a consultative meeting on the humanitarian uh, assistance maybe early next month uh, in Phnom Penh with all stakeholders because ASEAN alone, the AHA Center, cannot manage and handle such a mammoth uh, uh, humanitarian operation. We need uh, ASEAN's uh, uh, partners to help, especially international uh, organizations uh, such as uh, specialized UN uh, agency, uh, World Food Organization, World Health Organization, uh, UNDP, and many others, uh, uh, UN-related uh, organization. That will come, but uh, I think at the moment, uh, as I said, uh, the situation inside uh, Myanmar has not yet been stable. I, 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 I will look at the inside Myanmar uh, later on. So I will focus on the outside. As I said that uh, Outside Myanmar, the situation is much easier. ASEAN uh, five-part framework is still remain the relevant framework. Number two, support of uh, dialogue partner and ASEAN uh, friends is very strong. I must say that both United States, uh, China, Japan, and other country are strongly committed to ASEAN ongoing effort, and I think this is uh, very important. And um, why it's important? Because otherwise, uh, if the Myanmar crisis uh, drags on, they could invite uh, in foreign power or external intervention. I 
I am the one who is very concerned that if the situation drag on like this, there could be a, another proxy war inside Myanmar because a major power would love to fight war with one another through proxy and small country in this part of the world or in other part of the world will suffer. And as you can see what happened now in the Russia and Ukraine, I don't want to draw a parallel to what's gonna happen uh, in this part of the world. And I hope that it will not happen. So uh, that's, uh, that was the outside situation of the Myanmar uh, 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 crisis. Uh, the other point is that uh, at the moment, uh, the UN Secretary General has set up a special envoy, uh, Nolin Hazer as a special envoy. She is in uh, touch with the ASEAN special envoy. This is very important because in the previous year, uh, UN Secretary General special envoy on Myanmar work alone because uh, she carry a uh, global mandate. She thought that uh, uh, she should take the lead and ASEAN follow. And I think uh, you can see that uh, from this year, from the new special envoy of the special secretary general, uh, uh, Noreen Hazer is now uh, trying to synergize uh, her work, uh, global agendas on Myanmar, as well as the, with the uh, regional agenda that is in ASEAN. So in the ASEAN joint statement on the 17th of uh, uh, February, there is one paragraph saying that uh, the two special in watch work together, uh, synergize their work together to streamline their work and make sure that uh, any assistance, any help to uh, bring normalcy to Myanmar could be done more uh, effectively. Finally, uh, the situation outside Myanmar along the Thai uh, Myanmar border is stable despite some of the uh, attack, you know, particularly a Saturday attack uh, at the beach in Myawadi that was very uh, daring attack has caused some damage to the immigration office of the military junta that was very daring because it was conducted uh, near the Thai border. And it showed that uh, the resistance force uh, want to uh, uh, demonstrate its capacity to inflict uh, damage to uh, the Tatmadaw, even uh, at the most sensitive spot, just like uh, immigration office uh, near the Thai border. For me, uh, it's not a very uh, good sign at all. As I said, uh, situation uh, in the past uh, one year, uh, so far, Thai security apparatus has been able to manage it. Sometimes when you have uh, some uh, attack uh, along the Thai Myanmar borders uh, in the Korean health area uh, between uh, the Tatmadaws and the Korean Brigade 6, it will cause some uh, villagers to flee into the Thai territory. So far, there are only three or four major incidents that have caused some concern, causing large number, but these people, uh, after the situations uh, uh, turn calm, they return to villages. So at the moment, I would say, I would describe uh, Thai Cambodian as stable, even though we have a lot of people waiting on the Myanmar side to cross over to the border, for whatever reason, number one, uh, looking for job, number two, to return to their old job, number three, uh, to look for uh, healthcare. Uh, a lot of people waiting uh, to get vaccinated and try to uh, sneak inside Thailand. And also the last group are those who uh, want to escape prosecutions from the uh, uh, Myanmar's uh, uh, military junta. So this is the external uh, environment which uh, has been corroborated with ASEAN. And ASEAN is a leading uh, organization uh, that will uh, help to settle uh, the Myanmar crisis. Of course, 
having said so, uh, a lot of people said that, well, ASEAN is no good. ASEAN uh, talk only without action. You have to look carefully whether the situation uh, inside Myanmar is conducive for uh, any rapid uh, progress or not. Any organization engaged in conflict resolution would love to see tangible, solid progress in whatever circumstances. But inside Myanmar today, it's very unique and is also very dangerous. Now I will focus on the internal uh, Myanmar situation, which I think uh, uh, Ong Jo Mu has already uh, touched on the huge violation because of the ongoing fighting. As everybody know, uh, during the dry season, uh, beginning November until maybe, you know, a Tinjan has already passed, soon the rainy season will come, all the uh, conflicting party, whether it's the Tatmadaw, whether it's the um, ethnic groups, whether it's the uh, uh, militia, uh, people's defense force, and what's not, whatever arms group will try to use the battlefields as a means to gain revelation in the future uh, with the hope that whenever a political dialogue, if it started, they will have a better uh, bargaining power. And that kind of thinking is very dangerous because it induced further fightings today. And action that have you seen. I, I believe that, you know, as the rainy season approach, there will be more and more attack near the Thai border at the key installations of the Thai model, uh, try to demonstrate uh, the effectiveness of the resistance to attract uh, uh, foreign assistance and recognition. And I think uh, uh, that would be the main objective, you know, and that could uh, drag on the fighting within Myanmar. As you know, one of the top priority of the Five Point Crisp Plan is the immediate uh, uh, cessation of violence, ceasefire, which have not yet uh, happened. And as everybody realizes as well, that uh, in any uh, conflicts, uh, you need dialogue before ceasefires uh, can be implemented. Look at what happened in the uh, Russian uh, Ukraine war. So at the moment, the situation is uh, not very good. Uh, if you follow, like myself, uh, I monitor fightings throughout the country, uh, especially areas in the north and the northwest where the resistant force fighting uh, the uh, Tatmadaw and also Tatmadaw pledged to uh, eradicate all the resistant force in their area. That is not a good sign. And at the same time, the uh, Tatmadaw also issues uh, uh, overshares to uh, armed ethnic group uh, for peace dialogue so that uh, political dialogue can start. I, I don't think it can be done at the moment. It have to wait a while. Because for me, I think that the start of the rainy season would be the best time at the moment, everybody try to take advantage of the dry seasons to uh, make as much as uh, uh, grain, uh, make as much as uh, gains in the ground so that it can use as a leverage in the negotiation. So that that is a nice situation. And I think as long as fighting continue, uh, uh, civilians, uh, villagers will suffer and it will uh, even uh, escalate uh, into a blown out civil war. I hate to use these words in my writing because civil war uh, denote a very serious situation and that uh, the road to peace would be much more uh, difficult because Myanmar has a very diverse uh, uh, ethnic group, fully armed, you know, nearly uh, 20. So the danger is always there. So apart from the ongoing fighting, as I said, uh, the tendency as the uh, dry season uh, almost coming to an end, there will be more uh, intensified fighting here and there, particularly around the uh, 
uh, important uh, uh, government site uh, or sensitive area. Number two is the uh, down situations in the public health. I think this is a very serious issue because of the uh, continued uh, civil disobedience movement of uh, public health sector. And I think uh, a lot of people uh, uh, suffer and uh, they are urgently need humanitarian assistance, particularly uh, vaccines uh, to help uh, mitigate the spread of the COVID-19. As you know, uh, uh, Myanmar has not yet uh, benefited from uh, COVAX uh, program. Most of the vaccine that uh, uh, Myanmar uh, UNTA received has been donated by India, uh, by China, and some other country, including NGO like Nippon uh, Foundation, which uh, two months ago have donated 20 million doses uh, uh, vaccine uh, from India. And I think Thailand also uh, last month uh, donated uh, half a million Esther Senegal produced in Thailand to uh, Myanmar Red Cross. So I think uh, a vaccine uh, diplomacy could be one of the area that uh, open a small window for all concerned party or stakeholder to start uh, dialogue, but how to deliver uh, equitably vaccine to all concerned uh, affected group is an issue that needs to be uh, further discussed because at the moment, uh, I don't see any possibility because at the latest meeting between the special envoys uh, with Kokolai, uh, he's a task force, uh, chief of task force to handle the humanitarian. He has made clear that uh, humanitarian assistance, whatever they are, uh, could be delivered through, through entry, through international airport and through seaport, not along the uh, poorest uh, to uh, uh, Myanmar Thai border or any other border. So it is very clear that uh, the military junta want uh, direct delivery uh, via sea and also by planes. Uh, that is the condition put out. So I think uh, further negotiation are need to order to work out a humanitarian corridor, at least for a while, you know, make sure that there is a pause in fighting so that uh, the, the ASEAN team, AHA and other team uh, can form together and deliver uh, assistant, uh, humanitarian uh, assistant. Finally, I think uh, inside Myanmar, I don't know whether uh, the possibility to overture uh, that has uh, put out by the Tanmado uh, for a political dialogue uh, will become effective, that there will be some uh, AEO that will accept us so far. I have heard that some of them uh, have accepted, but not all of them. Uh, we still have to wait and see. Unless the situation I outlined inside Myanmar uh, uh, have, what I would say, improved mean if fighting stop, if humanitarian has been allowed, and if uh, uh, AEOs uh, accept the peace uh, overtures, all these positive things uh, will come together and together with the uh, ASEAN's uh, support and ongoing uh, coordination among dialogue partner, I think uh, there would be good aspect that some uh, much more progress will be made in the, in the middle of the year or the last quarter of the year. Uh, that would be my take. I will end here, Marina. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Kafi, for your uh, for sharing the different views on this issue. You emphasized uh, two aspects of the current Myanmar situation. First is from uh, internal uh, aspects, and the second one is uh, the external aspect. Um, and you also highlighted uh, 
although the progress is slow, uh, the five point consensus is uh, still useful and relevant as the framework uh, to tackle this crisis. Uh, before I turn to our last speaker, I would like to gently remind our audience on YouTube that you can write down your questions or comments on the live chat feature. So I'll read, I'll read them out uh, to the speakers later on during the Q&A session. Uh, last but not least, uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Fanarit. Uh, he is the president of the Asian Patient Institute in Cambodia. Uh, Mr. Fanarit will be touching more on Cambodia's approaches as the current ASEAN chair in handling the crisis. I'll give the floor to you, Mr. Fanarit, please. Thank you, sir, Ms. Marina, for the opportunity. And would like to say hi to Kun Kavi, uh, Ong Kyomo, and Luptini. It's a great pleasure to share a panel with all distinguished speakers. Um, I just would like to stress that uh, domestic factors remain the defining factor in Myanmar. And Kunkawi alluded to that the, uh, the domestic situation environment is not conducive for effective uh, international engagement. So uh, learning from the Cambodian case uh, in terms of conflict resolution, peacemaking, peace building, domestic actors are the defining actors. External actors it just uh, provide uh, capacity uh, play this uh, facilitating role and supporting role, but they could not decide on behalf of Myanmar people. Um, the Cambodian approach to Myanmar ha has been clear. It should be led and owned by the people of Myanmar uh, because they are the, the, uh, the holders of their destiny. Um, so, so that is first. Uh, we need to involve uh, different factions, uh, different groups in Myanmar to have a dialogue, to have a conversation, to build trust, and to find a certain uh, degree of solution to the current crisis. Um, so that is one of the objective of the chair of ASEAN is to uh, create this kind of uh, uh, environment uh, so that different stakeholders in Myanmar can come and have a dialogue. But first, they need to talk to all stakeholders in Myanmar. So, so far, uh, the special envoy have met different stakeholders, but they need to do more, especially Aung San Suu Kyi, for instance, uh, which is the key uh, political figure uh, in Myanmar. So, so hopefully, uh, for the next round of the visit of the special envoy, they could meet other high profile uh, political figures, especially from NLD. Um, and of course, other ethnic armed groups uh, uh, in Myanmar. Uh, second is the um, uh, humanitarian assistance. I think uh, some of us mentioned, Lufini uh, uh, Remis mentioned about 6 million population. Myanmar is in. Uh, need of uh, humanitarian assistance. Six, six million, that, that is a significant number. It's uh, equal to the whole Singapore populations, you know, that in need of uh, humanitarian assistance. Uh, there's some progress uh, with regards to humanitarian assistance. Uh, uh, the, the inflow of uh, vaccines, uh, medicines, and other supports to Myanmar. Uh, and the consultative meeting, multi-stakeholder consultative meeting that will be held in early May next next month will be uh, a critical kind of step further uh, to coordinate, mobilize, and uh, disseminate or distribute uh, assist, humanitarian assistance to Myanmar uh, inclusively uh, without discriminations, uh, even to a different uh, conflict zones across Myanmar. So there's some progress uh, with regards to that uh, humanitarian assistance because um, ASEAN has a, this moral responsibility or all the member states of ASEAN has this moral responsibility is to help uh, the people of Myanmar, especially those in need. Whatever we can do, uh, need to de deliver our support to them. Let them 
have hope uh, let them have dream continue to have hope and dream which is very important for uh, for a human being uh, to, to maintain hope and dream uh, and of course the um, this human training assistant uh, will also uh, have the people of Myanmar uh, to get from the trap of their human training crisis. And of course, what I learned from those who visited Myanmar lately, uh, inflation has been very uh, serious there. And the uh, devaluation of the local currency and inflation have hit uh, the economy very hard, especially um, uh, low income. Uh, populations. So this is a moral responsibility of ASEAN, uh, whatever we can do to support the people of Myanmar. Third is with regards to uh, this kind of geopolitical competition over Myanmar. I, I share the concern with Kun Kavi that Myanmar is vulnerable to becoming a proxy war uh, between major powers. Cambodia we all went through 30 years, three decades. And I don't wish to see Myanmar go through uh, more than a decade or two decades or three decades of civil war. It's so much suffering uh, to endure. And Cambodia went through it and doesn't wish to see any society in the world going through this kind of experience of suffering, of losses, great losses in which 25% of the population were purged during the Khmer Rouge and others were killed during the civil war. So that is something that all stakeholders in Myanmar uh, need to be cautious when dealing with this major power, uh, prevent them from turning Myanmar to a, uh, a proxy war. So that is something that all stakeholders in Myanmar need to be careful and to be aware of the risk falling into this trap, geopolitical competition trap. Uh, my, la my last point here uh, with regards to Cambodia chairmanship, we should not expect much from the Cambodia chairmanship. What they can do at this stage in between this year is human train assistance and to certain degree to collect information, to analyze information, to prepare ground for more effective uh, kind of ASEAN engagement, uh, Myanmar. And of course, next year, Indonesia will be the chair uh, of ASEAN. So perhaps Indonesia can deliver more uh, outcomes uh, or results with regards to engagement in Myanmar. So we need to have, need to be pragmatic and realistic and uh, should not expect much from the role of ASEAN. And uh, I would like to stress Myanmar themselves are the key stakeholders and don't expect external actors to do much to deliver peace and prosperity to Myanmar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fanari, for your uh, explanation. Um, I noted uh, that ASEAN should have a talk or dialogue with all stakeholders in Myanmar to build trust with them. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we turn to the Q&A session. We already have questions for our participant. So I'll read them out to the speakers. Uh, the first question is uh, from me, actually. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, what is the best way to make the Tatmadaw comply with the ASEAN proposal to address the Myanmar crisis? Should we isolate or embrace the Tatmadaw from uh, ASEAN forums? Um, maybe Mr. Um, Kafi, you want to go first, please? Oh, oh no, okay. Sorry. Um... Thank you very much for the question. I don't think uh, you can isolate the Myanmar. You have to engage Myanmar, even though it's very uh, difficult. And uh, engaging Myanmar uh, as a member of ASEAN family, and at the moment, uh, they still remain uh, uh, ASEAN family, but they're not uh, represented at the highest level. 
So there is need to make sure that uh, there's uh, sufficient tangible progress from now on until the end before the ASEAN summit in early uh, November that uh, uh, the uh, military junta leader Min Ong Lai can attend the uh, ASEAN summit. So I think further engagement is uh, necessary. And again, as uh, Chen Wenerit uh, uh, has said that uh, domestic condition at the moment uh, is not conducive, but I, I'm quite sure that uh, when the rainy seasons come, the situation will be more amicable for dialogue because all the conflicting uh, party that are fighting on the ground will be able to assess because uh, this will be the first dry season that they really engage in this kind of uh, uh, resistant uh, uh, with each other. So the best way is to continue to engage uh, knowing uh, how difficult uh, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaffee, for your answer. Um, Mr. Aung, please. Yeah, thank you for the questions. Uh, I think first and foremost, what we need to understand is the current fight going on in Myanmar for more than a year is not a fight between NLD and Tamado or Malashri. The fight is between the people of Myanmar and a handful number of people who try to illegally take over the power which sources from the people. And this is very important to understand. It is, uh, it is vital that international community understand what Myanmar people want. Myanmar people are fighting with everything, very little to nothing they have in hand to defend themselves, to end this dictatorship for once and for all. And I, of course, in earlier, as I mentioned, I believe in dialogue, I believe in peace, I believe in human rights. However, in the current given circumstance, the history suggests us the dialogue with Burmese Temodo doesn't didn't work in the past 70 years. And it wouldn't work. And all the interest that they have is to let them keep going Myanmar in their city school where the military dominate everything, all the highest decisions that are being made on behalf of, of, of the people. So what people of Myanmar once again want is a democracy, a federal democracy that's equal for everyone. And it's inclusive. All the ethnic religious minorities are included in the decisions that determine the future of the country. And if ASEAN really cares as a family member of Myanmar, ASEAN need to again, once again, reassess what role it can play given the constraint uh, and the capacity it has uh, to intervene in, in such a way. So overall, I, I think once again, even though ASEAN is established in a different way compared to other intergovernmental organizations across regional uh, government organizations across the world, it's time to, to, to look and, 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 and see what, what is the best way. And the best way for the moment is, yes, engaging matter, but if people do not want to engage, and because if ASEAN want to keep moving on in a status quo the way it is, it will question the principal stand. Like you cannot like talk about the justice and accountability, the crimes, the war crimes, the genocide, and the crimes against humanity. And, and thousands of people have given their lives uh, for, for, for the fight of democracy. So the, the, the accountability aspect will be always questions when, because it has been the case. So are we going to be forgetting to, to, to solve the justice for those who has given the life and livelihood and continue to determine the future in a way that didn't work in the, in the past? So that's the questions I think ASEAN should ask it, it itself, whether it's going to be in line with the people of Myanmar and, and it is going to be acting if it is saying, yes, we are in line with the will of the people of Myanmar and the actions need to be overlapping uh, of the statement that stand they make in conference and meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aung. Uh, Mr. Fanarit, do you want to add something, please? I'm a strong believer in engagement. Um, of course, there are different ways to engage. Um, uh, isolation is not a solution, obviously. 
uh, we need to be uh, practical and pragmatic. Uh, even the Taliban, you know, you have to talk to them. Now they do Afghanistan. Right? So the international community, including the UN, need to talk to Taliban. Uh, so um, we need to talk those in, in power, those who are in control, um, those who still have holding to power. Uh, they are the key stakeholders. So they need to talk to different stakeholders uh, in Myanmar uh, to find solutions. Uh, of course, um, looking at the, the progress, it's quite slow and limited progress because as the special envoy of ASEAN mentioned, the situation in Myanmar is not ripe for dialogue yet because all parties in Myanmar are not ready for dialogue and we cannot force them to have a dialogue. So until they are willing to have a dialogue, then ASEAN can provide platform for dialogue. What we can do is to provide platform, that's all. Uh, we can't do much, but uh, the stakeholder need to have political will to have a dialogue first. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fanerit. Lutfi, uh, you want to add something, yeah. please? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Marina. Um, for me, it's, it's always uh, to engage, uh, to engage them in in, in, in 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 one in one dialogue, of course, and not isolating them. However, um, I also agree with uh, what Mr. Panarit and Ka Mr. Kafi and Mr. Ong Chaomu have already stated earlier that um, it is the obligation as well for ASEAN. Um, in, in a broader sense, to also engage other parties in Myanmar in, in a way to uh, uh, either the ASEAN uh, engage the Tatmadaw and the other parties, um, the NLD, the CSO, the ethnic uh, minority uh, groups. Um, I think it's, 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 it's a way that could also uh, ease the situation for uh, ASEAN to actually engage uh, Myanmar as a whole um, is to engage every uh, relevant stakeholders, every relevant internal parties in Myanmar. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Lutfi. Um, now the second question is from Sun. Uh, she is from the South Korean mission to ASEAN. Uh, she said that uh, there is a recommendation from uh, a think tank in Indonesia uh, to set up a mediation office within Myanmar spread headed by one particular ASEAN envoy. So what do you think uh, of this suggestion? Do you think it's feasible? Uh, Mr. Aung, uh, would you please to give your response, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the for the questions. I think once again, as I mentioned, the current special sunbonds appointment is connected to the chairmanship of the ASEAN. And, and again, it's uh, the consistency, the progress uh, measuring methods and these things measure uh, matter. And also it's like, uh, like time wise, like they will always shift. So I think in a cohesive way, the, the best way to my understanding, yeah, ASEAN need to uh, set up in agreement with all member state, state that's not connected to the uh, uh, to the ASEAN uh, chairmanship because ASEAN chairmanship uh, change every every time and and if the MY has to be changing every time it it's com it has been complicated with the past two already and it could be more complicated so an special MY that can be truly representing ASEAN not like connected to the uh, the member state i think it's it is vital to distinguish the member state interest versus asean uh, uh, as a whole uh, the interest of asean as a whole as, as an intergovernmental organization so i think uh, it, it's it's i highlighted already it's it's need to be something different uh, the, the terms of reference need to be like comprehensive measurable and and sort of time bonding and and achievable and there are also expectations need to be realistic that we set, uh, despite I believe in ASEAN as well. That's, uh, uh, but I think 
the 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 context, the 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 volatileness of the context and the ability of the ASEANs and all member state political rules need to be taken into consideration as well. What we can expect out of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aum. Uh, Mr. Fanarit, um, can you share your thought, please? Hello, um, with regard to uh, chairmanship of ASEAN, um, of course, uh, Cambodia proposed Troika, uh, tripartite, so the previous, current, and future ASEAN chair, and plus Secretary General ASEAN. But the time of that was not supportive. Uh, so we cannot move further. Uh, so um, so it's kind of stuck now uh, that Troika tripartite arrangement uh, because it, um, perhaps we need more collective uh, efforts decision within ASEAN. One perhaps is not enough to have a more kind of leverage, uh, political leverage, diplomatic leverage. Uh, three ASEAN members would be more, I think, uh, influential in a way. The more ideas and political diplomatic leverage. Anyway, uh, it, uh, I think the uh, Tamadao is not is not willing to to endorse this uh, uh, tripartite or troika paper. Thank you, Sir Fanarit. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Kafi to share uh, his response. Please, Pat. Uh, okay. Uh, judging from the history of how the uh, Tatmadaw uh, handled international affair, I, for one, believe that uh, as an idea of uh, Troika system plus Secretary General will finally be accepted by the Tatmadaw because that's the only way that uh, uh, Tatmadaw can uh, help positive and constructive engagement. It's uh, useless to talk to someone that does not belong to, to ASEAN. Only ASEAN can uh, handle. And the Troika system allows the continuities of ASEAN uh, consensus and uh, engagement. That would be my take. Thank you, Mr. Kafi. Would you like to add something? Yeah, thank you, Marina. Um, yeah, uh, for now, I, I I personally think that the, the tripartite or the troika would still be a one uh, mediation process uh, office that would actually uh, assist uh, on 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 somehow significant way as uh, as has been mentioned earlier as well that it's uh, comprises of the past, current, and the future uh, ASEAN chairs, and if um, one and five would uh, in, in the future if one and five would be taken from 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 uh, from from this troika I think it would be good but um, I think it's it's the troika that would actually um, keep the effort sustained and um, somehow I still uh, agree uh, if the troika would actually play more role more significant role in the process thank you Uh, thank you, Lutfi. Um, now, another question is coming from uh, Hera from the Habib Center. If the Myanmar crisis cannot be resolved this year and continue to 2023 as the, as the upcoming um, ASEAN chair, what do you think priority actions should Indonesia take to help civilians who are affected from the COVID? Um, maybe I would like to invite Mr. Panarit first. Please, Thank you. Um, well, uh, Indonesia is is regarded as a as a most influential member of ASEAN due to its size and leverage, diplomatic leverage. So, um, Indonesia will face the problem of high expectations. So, if you could not deliver much, I think Indonesia will face a lot of uh, criticism challenges. Uh, next year, because they is, they have high expectation on Indonesia, they don't have much expectation on Cambodia, but Cambodia have done its best to, to deliver. It's fine, but next year I think it's uh, Myanmar crisis will continue to haunt the chairmanship of ASEAN, because I think Cambodia now uh, most of the time 
too much occupied with Myanmar crisis. We have a lot of uh, regional, international issues to handle, <laughs> to solve, but Myanmar take us our time and effort. But of course, we will not be hostage to Myanmar crisis. Uh, we will not let Myanmar crisis to uh, be a stumbling block in our consensus building, community building. So, uh, so I, I, I think the hot stone will be on Indonesia. So the priority for Indonesia next year is to ensure that election in Myanmar will be free and fair because that is the promise of the Tamada. But how can Myanmar, uh, how can Indonesia have to ensure that free and fair election in Myanmar? Perhaps that is the most challenging task for the chairmanship. Thank you, Mr. Fanarit. Um, Mr. Aung, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the expectations to Indonesia is high. Uh, it will be high as mentioned by uh, Banarit. And uh, I think Indonesia need to be prepared uh, to fulfill in whatever capacity it has uh, that expectations to particularly the people of Myanmar. And I think as I mentioned earlier as well, the, if it is realistic and feasible within ASEAN uh, context, like to look into the special sun voice appointment again and allocating the resource as well that's required by the by the special sun boy, not to attach to one 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 country and um, and as well as a clear mandate with uh, with uh, with like authority that being given uh, solely for for this uh, this ma mandate and when it's come to the elections we had have, have had election even though that was and every election has no election is perfect around the world. And, and, and people of Myanmar don't want another election that's being led by, by Junta. So in terms of support for elections, I would like not as an advisor to the NUG, it's Ministry of Human Rights, but as a normal citizens of Myanmar, uh, like many others, uh, we don't want elections, we reject the call for elections because we don't believe and, and the justifications that military has given to try to overtake the power is not logical and it's not acceptable. So people of Myanmar will not accept any elections and, 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 and we have government that's being uh, set up legitimately. And that's again, not an LD alone. And there is, it's diverse to somewhat level and there's still room for improvement and, and uh, expectations of elections, uh, like to have a, a free and fair election is not the priority agenda for the people of Myanmar. And, and people of Myanmar will strongly reject such support by, inter by, by international community, including ASEAN countries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aung. Uh, I'd like to invite Lutfi and Mr. Kapi. Thank you. You want me to answer first? Mr. Kapi, if you want. Okay, um, my, I, I have a different answer. I think the, uh, this year uh, will be a very cool, crucial year uh, for future settlement of uh, Myanmar crisis. And I think Cambodia would be able to lay some groundwork for the future that Indonesia can build on. I don't think Indonesia can just come in and introduce new element that has no basis from what has been built in the past two years, even though the first year has been very slow and this is the second year. Because the ASEAN process is a continual process, it's a block building process, you have to understand that. The election, whatever it is, I will not argue at the moment, all the preparation must be to ensure number one, there is a ceasefire, there must be political dialogue, there must be timely delivery of a humanitarian assistance. These are the priorities. And with this settle, and I think elections and other uh, necessary uh, political process will come after. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kafi. Lutfi, please. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um. Okay. I think um, as uh, we have recommended um, in our paper, and uh, we have already mentioned earlier that um, Indonesia uh, should left should continue and should leverage um, the effort to pave way that Cambodia has made this year. Um, Indonesia has to Indonesia has to improve the effort from Cambodia to from what have Cambodia done this year. If it includes the election, if it includes the humanitarian aid uh, distribution, if it includes the ceasefire. Um, as for now, um, I personally think it it, it Indonesia uh, should uh, continue and should uh, improve. And develop what Cambodia has uh, has done this year for next year. Thank you. Thank you, Lutfi. Um, another question from Misun uh, from uh, Korean Mission to ASEAN. Besides humanitarian assistance from dialogue partners, what else should ASEAN ask for dialogue partners' engagement while resisting external intervention to cause a uh, proxy war, as Mr. Kafi mentioned? Uh, Mr. Kavi, would you like to share your answer, please? Yeah, this is a very good question. And I think a country like uh, Korea, which has a very clear New South and Plus policy, uh, does not want to see external factor engaging in the, uh, uh, escalating domestic conflict. I think country like Korea, India, together with China, and Japan must make sure that they are behind uh, ASEAN effort. See, that is very important. Number two, uh, because of the social media can provide uh, some form of uh, impression or illusion that uh, the war inside Myanmar can be won by either by Tatmadaw or by resistant force. Uh, I will not have any uh, judgment on the current situation it's already a very sad situation to see various uh, uh, party engage in fighting, causing uh, casualty for civilian. But um, I would like to see the whole from all the, uh, each group from their own assessment that this war cannot be won. And the best way is to stop fighting and look for political settlement. Of course, uh, the past was painful as the Ong Zhou uh, has outlined, uh, elections were stolen and uh, uh, Myanmar people was very angry, but uh, political uh, process has to be based on uh, political reality. Sometimes it's not a very uh, uh, beautiful or favorable favorable things to do. So for me, external dialogue partner must work together ensuring that no one behave like a Maori that they would like to support either side in the show that uh, uh, will emerge one winner. I think the best way is to have political dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kafi. Uh, the next question is from Tao Huan from the Highway Center. Uh, he's asking to all speakers, um, what do you think um, about uh, any comments on the opinions of many uh, that ASEAN has failed the five point consensus? And if that's the case, um, should Indonesia come up with an updated set of solutions? I'd like to invite Mr. Aung first, please. And I think once again, the uh, thank you for the questions once again. And, and as I mentioned previously, the five point of consensus is a, a good thing. Uh, that was the foundations. And however, uh, as we all knew that little to no progress has been made. And, and again, it's need to be reviewed when Indonesia take over the, 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 the chairman and what is realistic and what is feasible and what is morally appropriate uh, in, in terms of, uh, I think put is, putting aside the the, uh, the geopolitical interest and things like that, which is difficult in politics time to time, but 
we are talking about 54 million people, more than 54 million people, lives and livelihoods again. Every day there is impact on the kitchen in the fire of the people. And every day someone is dying or more than a person is dying. And every day people are becoming homeless. So I think once again, we need to stand from a humanity standpoint and see what are the realistic things in order to, uh, to make this country to the path of democracy. And it is again uh, equal for everyone, uh, which, which is a process again, it's not a result. And there's always room for Im Im improvement. And, and, and lastly, uh, people are able to have the sense of human security. Uh, it's important and, 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 and which is being taken away from many people in Myanmar now. And uh, I, I think that's the, 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 the review need to be taken, uh, made in heavy consultations with all primary and secondary stakeholder, including uh, ethnic right-based organization, ethnic arm organizations, civil society organizations, democratic forces, and other key stakeholders, uh, both at the international and regional level. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aung. Um, Mr. Panarit, please. I, I think we need to stress the centrality of ASEAN. ASEAN is the most reliable, trustworthy, honest broker for the regional issues. Should not trust major powers, but should trust ASEAN. Because ASEAN does not have any ambition to create a swell influence over Myanmar. ASEAN can do is to help Myanmar people. So I think trust in ASEAN leadership Centrality is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lutfi, please. Yeah, thank you, Marina. I think um, I think it's not um, we couldn't say fail if it's if it's if it's still on the way. Um, Cambodia aims to emphasize the ASEAN centrality and five point consensus as the base of their effort to uh, within their, their chairmanship in ASEAN this year. And I believe um, all things that ASEAN need is how to actually measure the achievement of this five-point consensus instead of um, changing it because it was assumed real. Um, so I think if um, soon Indonesia um, uh, uh, becomes the chairman of, of ASEAN next year. Um, well, I think it will need to have uh, an indicator of uh, or a measurement how, on how to uh, actually uh, see the achievement of each uh, of the five uh, point consensus and um, base the measurement of how it is failed or, or how if it's success from this measurement and not presumably saying that it's failed or not, but making the measurement to achieve, to, 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 to see how ASEAN have achieved the five point consensus. I think it's important. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kafi, any comments? Oh, yeah. No, please. no, I, I don't. I don't have any more comment. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, before we close the the discussion, I'd like to invite all speakers to give a conclusion. Perhaps uh, starting from Lutfi and followed by Mr. Aum, Mr. Kafi, and Mr. Fanari. Please. Thank you, uh, Marina. Um, yeah. Um, Cambodia has almost made it to the uh, their fifth or fourth month of effort of, of, of their approach to the Myanmar crisis uh, this month. And I believe we need to see more on what's on the table, what's on the plan. And um, we should actually see, uh, especially from the humanitarian aid and how we could encourage uh, the mediation process to be implemented, especially with the initiation, with the initiative of the Troika or the tripartite uh, by Cambodia, Brunei, and Indonesia. Um, 
I think Indo- Cambodia needs to see uh, uh, these possibilities to be implemented and how what uh, they're, again, they're making measurements on, uh, on how uh, or have they achieved the five point consensus with, at their basis to the uh, settlement of the Myanmar crisis. Thank you. Marina. Yeah, Mr. Aum, please. Yeah, thank you so much once again. Uh, this is a very timely webinar and uh, thank you for organizing it. Uh, I think again, uh, there, there were limitations, uh, constraints and various other uh, factors uh, perhaps that's influenced the progress. However, it was, it was I think there were things that were doable, uh, uh, could have been done in a different way. Um, and uh, I think that once again, our expectations to ASEAN would be a, from a more moral ground and, and uh, people of Myanmar uh, doesn't want to put a loan on the shoulder of ASEAN and the whole world has been watching what has been happening. And, and if the whole world is just watching on what is going on, where people are being killed, it would be morally once again inappropriate. And as a member of ASEAN and a family member, I think, People of ASEAN particularly plays an important role beyond their government in doing whatever they can given capacity to push their respective government in order to end and this and put the Burma in the path of democracy and deliver the justice uh, that's um, to the people who have lost their life, family members, and, and put our, our shoes, uh, ourselves in their shoes and, and see from a sympathy, humanity perspective, and 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 rather than, um, uh, rather than um, um, thinking like defining reality with our perceptions on what is going on in Myanmar. So with that, I end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aung. Um, Mr. Kafi. Well, uh, one final word is that uh, Myanmar crisis is very complicated, and it takes a long time to understand. And then you have a situation in the world today uh, with the social media and uh, whatever the quick minds of all the people who are bystander who want to see progress quickly that works against the reality. So I think that is something that uh, policymaker uh, have to deal with. For me, uh, ASEAN will continue to make sure that uh, they can bring normalcy back to uh, the Myanmar and uh, fulfill Myanmar aspiration. And I don't know when, uh, how long does it take? Uh, and I think uh, in the mind of all uh, ASEAN leaders, including ASEAN citizens, they are very concerned. They, they have empathy of what's going on in Myanmar, but uh, they can do very little. They just hope that uh, uh, the effort by the leader as a group can be in the final uh, phase can help in the, uh, the crisis in Myanmar. I, I really believe that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kafi. Mr. Fanaret? Um, Cambodia have done it best over the past four months and the evening six months if we continue to do it best. With sincerity and honesty. That is important, sincerity. Cambodia doesn't have any geopolitical agenda on Myanmar or to have influence on Myanmar. It just fulfills the chairmanship of ASEAN, a responsible member of ASEAN, and a, a good neighbor of Myanmar. So uh, Cambodia will not give up hope, but uh, continue to build on what has been achieved so far and with the hope that progress will be made along, along uh, this kind of uh, very difficult journey. Uh, so six more months, Cambodia will fulfill its chairmanship and we'll uh, let Indonesia to take over chairmanship of ASEAN and have provide better solution, innovative solution to regional problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fanarit. Um, I hope several policy recommendations from the speakers can be considered as input by policymakers in ASEAN to restore uh, democracy and stability in Myanmar. 
Uh, now, I think we have come to the end of today's discussion. I'd like to thank our speakers, Lutfi, Mr. Aung, Mr. Kafi, and Mr. Panerit for sharing valuable insights on this issue and for all your comments and responses. And I'll, I'd also like to thank our audience for actively participating in this discussion. Uh, lastly, happy fasting. And as we are approaching the Eid, we wish you a blessful Eid to all who celebrate. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we look forward to seeing you at the Habibi Center's other event. Thank you. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.